Hi there and welcome to this video. So in this edit, I'm just looking at this image here, which is available for download in the description box as usual. And I'm going to take this one potentially two ways. I thought it'd make quite a nice black and white, but I also want to try and enhance the contrast between the colors whilst keeping the overall look as this kind of hazy faded appearance, which is actually really nice. So the first thing I want to do, regardless of which of those directions I go in, is just do a bit of general cleanup as usual. So I'm going to create a new blank layer by clicking the new layer icon down here. And all I'm going to do here is zoom out again and think, what are the distractions? The, sto what's the story of the image is, what's the purpose? What are you trying to get from the image when you look at it? Or what do you want people to get from it? So we've got this kind of isolated surfer here with a bright red surfboard walking on this kind of muted beach with hardly any colour, with the hazy, misty trees in the background, looking quite desolate and like a bit isolated. But then there's some bits of seaweed and some other sort of marks and dirt on the sand down here, which because the subject of the photo is so small in, in the frame overall, these appear quite large and they're very distracted. So we'll get rid of those. Now, there are some of the people in the water here, which are very small, and I don't know whether I would take them out or not. I think I'm not going to in this one. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to tidy up this. Sorry for all the zooming in and out, by the way. I encourage you to do that yourself, just because working at really close in all the time, is actually a recipe for missing things. So I'm going to go to the spot healing brush for a change, and let's see, and change the source mode to current and below. So with the spot healing brush, you don't choose a, an area to copy from like you do with the healing brush or the clone tool. You just swipe it, click, you either click on a little area or swipe it over an area and it will try to just blend it into the scenery and get rid of it. Now it works pretty well for small items like this. If you try and remove much larger items with it, it's not as effective as some of the other techniques, but if you've got a lot of very small things like this, you just want to get rid of quickly, and there's not too much detail, you can always go back over it, then it's perfect. Sometimes if you don't get the result, you might just have to go back over it a couple of times, but that's fine. It's also good for if you're doing some portrait retouching and you've got a lot of tiny little spots, pimples, or little bits of dry skin on the face, you can just go over it with the spot healing brush as it's designed for originally and just quickly get rid of a load of these now not going to go too crazy but one important thing i'm going to i am going to do i'm going to really encourage you to do as well is stop every few minutes and just zoom out and look at the picture as a whole and then decide what else i want to do because you can spend so much time zoomed in to getting rid of and changing tiny things that don't make a difference that it's actually, you might end up making the image worse. So for me now looking at this zoomed out, it's the bottom left corner of the image is really what I want to tidy up now, which is really just distracting me. Just some of these bigger bits down here. Let's get back to the spot healing brush, which is a J is a shortcut for the healing brush tools. And then you can change it down here to get to the spot healing brush if it's not already on it. Just gonna do these. Okay, for the purposes of a demonstration, I'm going to say that's enough of that. Again, you don't want to go overboard. It needs to look natural. So that's my clean layer. Actually, rename your layers. It's good practice to rename your layers as well to get track of things. So that's my clean layer. Let's look at the surfer. It's actually here. Even when I'm saying that, I am just going to get rid of a couple more things. See how quick it is, though, with the spot healing brush tool. Just click, and they're gone. There we go. So I want to do a colour version, a black and white version. I'll do the colour version first, and then we'll do the black and white as like a secondary option later on. So what I'm going to do is I want to make this board really pop, really stand out. And we've done a similar move to this in a couple of the more recent videos, but I'm going to go to the hue saturation adjustment layer, and I'm going to choose red from the range. So it'll just try to target anything that it sees as red in the image. And this is the only thing in the whole image that it will definitely see as red. It will have red influence because everything else is just washed out pale colours. So now if we play around the hue and saturation, we can take it we can take it wherever we like. Cause it's just targeting the reds of the image, which also affects the skin, but we can quickly mask that out in a second. 
And as you can see, it's picking up the reflection nicely as well without having to do any sort of accurate masking at all. So I was tempted to take it to magenta -y pink, but I think it would look more impactful if it was just a really rich red. So I'm going to just take it so tiny bit to the left of the original. So it's not an orangey red, it's more of a, it is more of a pinker red. And I'm going to also increase the saturation. Not too much because it'll start to look like a cartoon, but just enough to make it really pop compared to the original. And now, because it's affecting a face, I'm going to press B for my brush tool, make sure the foreground color is black, so we're going to remove from the mask. And if you see it's white, by the way, a shortcut is if you press the X key, it swaps the background and the foreground color, so you make sure that black is at the front. And then I'm just going to click over a head on a skin that's over her head, and that's going to take that out. She's so small in the frame overall. I just think that really pops and helps it stand out amongst like the bleakness of the background. Now, one thing we could do with the background is on other images with sky, blue sky and things like that, we might try to enhance the blue sky and enhance the clarity and make everything nicer. I don't really want to do that much here because I don't want to spoil the whole, the whole feeling of the original image. And when you're working on stuff for yourself, either if it's things that you've taken or you're doing it for a job, you've got to bear in mind what the overall goal of the original image is. And on this, it's obviously not intended to be a really colorful image. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a curves adjustment layer and I'm just going to make sure just make sure the channel's on RGB. So it's just affecting the overall lightness and darkness of the image and not individual colors. I'm just going to click somewhere in the middle and just drag it down a little bit. Mm. And, and this is affecting the whole image, but I am just going to mask it in a minute in the sky. And I'm just going to go to the blue. And I'm just going to drag that up. So we've made the image a tiny bit darker and a tiny bit more blue. And what I'm going to do now is go on the layer mask, press Command or Control I to turn that off. So that's, that adjustment is now not activated. And I'm going to press G for the gradient tool. Make sure that it's black and white in the color up here and it's not got any other funny colors. So now we're going to create a gradient of that adjustment using the layer mask to, to graduate that change in. So do that by clicking at the top and dragging down, maybe to about here. And as you can see, it's at, you might be able to tell from that, it's applied it backwards. So it's actually gone from the bottom up. And we can see this by looking at the layer mask. And if you alt click on the layer mask, you can see black is areas that are supposed to be not affect or will not be affected by the adjustment. Whites are affected. So it's given us the opposite of what we want. We want the area at the bottom to not be affected. So that's very easy to fix if you get if you do it the wrong way around. You just click on the layer mask and press Control or Command I, and it will invert it. So now, if we alt click on the layer mask again, we've got the adjustment fading in at the top where we want it. And if I turn the layer adjustment on and off now, you can see what that's done. It's just darkened it, so it's taking your eye further down to the image. It's added a tiny bit of blue into the sky, but still kept that hazy aesthetic that the original photographer was going for. So what I'd like to do now is a crop. Now, I'm going to decide on a crop that I like. I'm actually going to go 9 by 16 on this. And a good rule of thumb is if you get the subjects, anything of importance in the image or focus, either on the vertical or horizontal lines, or the points where they intersect, it's using the rule of thirds for composition. And just coincidentally, when I've done this, the intersecting points of the grid are actually perfectly on the surfer down there. So that's actually, that's going to put the surfer in a really good point for composition without, without kind of diminishing the look of the overall image. Because let's not forget the photographer had the subject very small in it for a reason. So we're not going to zoom in and start cropping it in because in theory, that's not what the, the job is, right? If this is your own photo, you can do what you like to it. But we're playing in this scenario here where we've been given this to just do a bit of 
editing to touching up a bit but not changing the overall story of the shot so now we've done those adjustments which are quite subtle but i think they've made quite a big difference so that would be the color version and now we'll do a black and white version and one of the easiest ways to do this is to use the i'm just looking for it on here no that's the invert so I'll talk as a look at the black and white adjustment layer, which doesn't appear to be on here for some reason. There we go, black and white. It was right in front of me all along. That's the, that's the problem with doing it live. How the black and white filter works, and this is why it's so much better than doing a grayscale version of an image, is now we're in here. It will treat all these, you see they've got these colored sliders. Now look at the image, look at the surfer. When I move that one, this is red. So it's changing the gray values of the image. So what this tool actually does is it lets you adjust. It makes it black and white, but then it lets you adjust the sort of relative lightness and darkness of um, the image based on the color sliders here. So for example, we know that border is red. So if I drag the red slider, it's gonna make it, it's gonna push it towards white one way or more towards black the other way. And this just gives you some control over your black and white, your black and white conversion, right? So if something, if say the surfboard there, it's merging into the, it's merging into the sand behind, because when it's converted to black and white, it looks similar in a tonal range, then you can get this slider and you can push it away. So it's get it some separation. You can either make it darker so it stands out more, or you can make it lighter so it stands out more. So it's totally up to you which direction you, you go in. I kind of like it slightly darker. You could almost make it like a, sil a silhouette of the shape if you push it too much. I'm going to leave it about there. And you can see what changes the off there are for other sliders. Yellow, there's not going to be much, maybe in the skin. That's the same with the red. A bit of change in the skin. Green. No, you think it'd change the trees, but they're so desaturated, there's not enough information there for it to pick up on. Cyan, there's quite a bit of cyan in the overall image, but as you can see, unless you've got a very high quality image to start with, if you push this too much, you can see all these like JPEG artifacts and compression and other sort of gunk comes out. So you need to be careful with this that you don't, if you start seeing anything like that, then just back off with your back off with your uh, selection adjustments basically so blue again that's the sky but we're getting the same thing look at all this nasty stuff that comes out if you start pushing this too far so i quite like that magenta it's affecting the board a little bit but i don't want that so there's the there's the black and white version now we could always add a little bit more contrast if we want we can put another curves adjustment layer on and with the rgb we could just do a very basic S curve. So pull the curve up very slightly towards the top end of the curve near the highlights and then bring the equivalent part down a tiny bit in the shadow area. And this just creates a tiny little bit of contrast. Again, we don't want to go too much because the overall image was supposed to be quite a low contrast one anyway. In fact, I don't like that. So I'm going to remove it. I'm going to say that's our black and white version. That's our color version. 